Okay, so the first thing that we have to do to get started is to install Ruby on Rails. There are a few dependencies that we have to install first. The first one is called Node.js. All we have to do is go to Node.js.org, Node.js.org, and then we just have to download. I'm gonna download for Windows because that's the operating system that I'm on. Click on LTS because LTS is the one that stands for long-term support. So once it's installed, go ahead and open it up and then run the file. I already have it installed, but I'll just run it anyway. Couldn't do any harm. So click next, then click I accept and next, and then just click next again. And then just click install. So Node.js has been successfully installed. Let's click finish. The next one that we have to install is called Yarn. Remember, I have the links to these websites in the description. So just check out the description and then you can click the link. For now, I'm just gonna search up Yarn download Windows, and then we can click on the installation. And then I'm gonna click on alternatives. And I'm just going to click on download installer. I'm going to click on Windows because I'm using Windows and then that's it. So again, you're going to need to run Yarn by double clicking. Now again, I already have Yarn, so it's actually not going to let me install it this time. But you would just click next and next and next and then finish and then Yarn would be installed. So after you've installed Yarn, there's a few more things to do. And first of all, we're just going to go to railsinstaller.org. And this is one of the main things that you have to do. And I'm just going to click on windows ruby 2.3 so this website just hosts a bunch of packages that you need to install rails ruby 2.3 isn't actually the current version of ruby so what we're going to have to do is update the version of ruby so once it's installed i'm just going to double click it again just to show you and then i'll click next and next and you'd click install here and then that's it i'm going to click install just to make sure that i'm with you and we have the same setup Okay, so now I'm just gonna click finish and then the Rails installer will be installed. Okay, so now we have all the packages for Rails. What we need to do is install the newest version of Ruby. So let's go to rubyinstaller.org and then I'm just gonna click on the one in bold and you need to click on the one in bold as well. So just click on that one and then it will install and then we're gonna run it and then it will install the latest version of Ruby. It will automatically overwrite the Ruby that we just installed. If you're ever looking to update to the latest version of Ruby, you just come to this website and you get the latest one. So I'm gonna click install for all users. And then I accept the license and then make sure that this one is clicked, add Ruby executables to your path and this one as well. Click install and next. Okay, so now just click finish. And now this command window pops up. We're just gonna click enter and it's gonna install the necessary components. And then just click enter again once it's finished. Click enter again and then it goes away. Okay, and then just open up a new CMD window by typing in CMD command prompt and then run gem install rails and that should install rails globally on your system. So as you can see, it's installing. For me, I'm in my users directory. I'm in the pova directory. Okay, so everything has successfully been installed and just to verify, we're going to run the command rails dash V. V stands for version and let's see what it says. And it says rails 7.0.4.3. Now we're going to say ruby-v, same thing, just to check our version of Ruby, 3.2.2, perfect. Then we're just going to check yarn-v, it gives us our version. And then you can just run the command node-v, and it gives us our version. If you're not getting your version, that means it's not successfully installed, so just make sure that you have everything installed. Okay, so now it looks like that we have everything installed to get started developing with Rails. This is so good, and I'm so excited to get started. So what I'm going to do is go into the directory in which I want to start my new Rails project. So for me, it's going to be in documents and then in GitHub. And this is the directory where I want my Rails project to be. And then finally, to generate a new Rails project, all you have to do is say Rails new and then the name of your project. I'm going to name it YouTube and I think you should name it YouTube as well. And as you can see, it's doing a mad one and it's creating a bunch of files. Okay, so after a few minutes, it looks like it's finally done. And I'm gonna open my Visual Studio Code Editor. This is the one I recommend. And to install it, you just go and search it up and then click download. Okay, so I'm just gonna open the folder that I just created. And as you can see, it's YouTube. So select folder. And now the project is officially open in my VS Code. And what we're gonna do is run the Rails server. So I'm gonna go full screen and then I'm gonna click on terminal and hit new terminal. You can also hit control shift and plus, and then we're just gonna run the command rails s. And what this does is it starts the rails server. I'll just zoom in so you can see it. Run rails s. And as you can see, it starts and it says listening on this port on PID 6108 and it says control C to stop. So I'm gonna hit control and left click on this link and it's gonna take me there. 
And as you can see, we have our new Rails project. It gives us the Rails logo, absolutely beautiful. And so yeah, now we know Rails is successfully installed. I hope you're here with me. Let's get this show on the road.